The day is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exultation. Let us also, gather together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again in glory. Let us pray. O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man Simeon the light for the revelation to the Gentiles, we humbly ask, in answer to your people's prayers, that you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles, which we are eager to carry in praise of your name, so that treading the path of virtue, we may teach the light that never fails, through Christ our Lord. Let us go in peace to meet the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented this day in the temple in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I send my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver till they present right offerings to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord. O gates, lift up your heads, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory, the Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war? O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is he, the King of glory, he, the Lord of armies? He is the King of glory. Alleluia. to enlighten the Gentiles and give glory to Israel, your people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the law a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, 
looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And inspired by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is spoken against. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, and the thoughts of many may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asia. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, and as a widow till she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping and fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. The great feasts of our faith are often linked to the drama of the rise and fall of sunlight and darkness. So Epiphany, for example, we celebrate on the first day that the sun begins to rise earlier. The days have been getting longer, but until that feast, dawn is stuck at the same time, until we celebrate the coming of the three wise men from the East. And today's feast, Candlemas, is midway between the shortest day of the year and the spring equinox. The winter, is beginning to let go of its grasp. Spring is on the way, barely visible, but it's coming. The balance of the year is tipping towards spring and sun and new growth. So in the Middle Ages, the Scandinavians used to celebrate on this day that the bears woke up from their hibernation, stretched their paws, and they began to think of breakfast. In America, groundhogs traditionally are believed to emerge from their burrows on this day and sniff the air. And if you go around university parks, you can see snowdrops, also called Candlemas bells. And they are a sign that spring is on the way, even if we don't see much sign of it. So why do we celebrate Candlemas on this day in the solar calendar? Because after Israel's long winter, today 
you see a sign of the spring for which she yearned. The Lord comes to his temple. But hardly anybody noticed, except for a couple of old people. In Rembrandt's wonderful painting of the presentation, you see this little group, the Holy Family, bathed in light. And the rest of the gloomy temple is filled with hundreds of people who aren't taking any notice. They don't even seem to see it. And the Lord comes in an ordinary baby. He doesn't have a special sign or a tattoo like Harry Potter. He's just like all the other babies. So how do these two old people notice him? People whom I must say I appreciate more and more every year. Because they had gone through all those long years waiting for the Lord. They never gave up hoping that he would come. In a wonderful interview just before his death, Carl Jung said, old people who just dwell in the past are dead already. But old people who are alive to the future are wonderfully alive, even if death is approaching. Simeon and Anna let them be surprised because the Lord doesn't come as expected. He doesn't come as that third reading from Malachi suggested, a fiery judge. He comes in a moment of mutual gift. Mary and Joseph give Jesus to the Lord, to God, and God gives him back, and they give two doves, the offering of poor people. So the first sign of spring is this surprising moment of gift unexpected gift. In the church we've been going through a long, hard winter. The horrible scandal of sexual abuse. People falling away from the faith. No obvious signs of spring in the church. We're regularly told that we live in post-Christian Britain that we're well on the way to decline and maybe extinction. But if, like Simeon and Anna, we keep our eyes open, we shall see little signs of God's springtime, the budding of a new year. It says in the preface, for holy men and women, you renew the church in every age by raising up men and women outstanding in holiness. And even now there are young people who will renew our church, even if we have not yet spotted them. Elsa McIntyre, the Canadian philosopher, said that Europe needs a new St. Benedict. Well, he's probably already here, if only we could see him. And there are probably also new St. Dominics and St. Francis's, perhaps even in this chapel, a new Teresa of Avila and Teresa of Lisieux, Teresa of Calcutta, Dorothy Day. The Lord is coming. He comes in young people who will renew our church in ways that we don't expect, maybe we don't even want. So when the time comes, we oldies can depart in peace. And our society is living through the long, hard winter of the pandemic. 
when I flew back from Jerusalem almost a year ago, it was just before lockdown, I thought it would last two weeks. And now almost a year later, a hundred thousand deaths later, there aren't many signs of a post-pandemic spring. But the Lord comes to our world in all sorts of young people with their gifts, their creativity, spiritual, artistic, scientific. As Amanda Gorman said at the presidential inauguration, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it, with the grace of God. Let's pray. In your mercy, O Lord, deliver your people from the pestilence that presently afflicts them. To those who are sick, grant health in mind and body. To those who are in fear or in isolation, grant peace of mind and consolation of your Holy Spirit. To those who care for the sick and all who are in danger, Grant your protection and courage. Welcome those who have died into your eternal rest. Console those who grieve. And as by your grace we work to establish your kingdom, grant that we may be a sign of hope for the world. Through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself. So from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving the blessing, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Dominic, our Father, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, we dare to say, Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he would not see death 
until he'd been privileged to welcome the Christ. So may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.